Hi, my name is Roger Henning. I'm the co-owner of a company called Action First Aid and the co-founder of a program we're starting called the Fibrillator Safe Neighborhood Program. And I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Steve Brooks, who's a resuscitation scientist and um, also a very important person with this program. And, uh, Steve, can you tell us a little bit about why uh, you feel this program would be beneficial to your neighborhood? Absolutely. Uh, so, as Roger mentioned, I'm, um, I'm an emergency doc, so I, I see the other end of cardiac arrest all the time. And um, I'm a scientist that studies cardiac arrest and bystander CPR and defibrillators and how important those things are. But the sad truth of it is, is that most of the time uh, when cardiac arrest happens in communities, especially in homes and neighborhoods like this, bystander CPR does not happen and defibrillators are not available or not used. And there are lots of reasons for that, but a major one is because currently they're not available in most places. And even if they are available, many people in, in the neighborhood or in the area don't know that they're there. So when the time comes and the unexpected happens, and when seconds count in cardiac arrest, um, it's really important that as a neighborhood we know where the defibrillators are. And there are people engaged, uh, willing and able to do CPR and get the defibrillator to save a life. So, you know, when I heard about your idea with uh, putting defibrillators in neighborhoods, I, you know, immediately thought it was an amazing idea. A little bit overwhelming, the idea of trying to get defibrillators in every neighborhood, but, uh, but you, your enthusiasm on this project really drove me to get involved. So here we are at my house, getting ready to put the, the first one in Kingston for sure, and maybe maybe the first one, uh, you know, on the side of a home in uh, in Ontario. So and I'm really I'm really Canada. proud to be a part of yeah. this. Yeah, great. And David, uh, would like to introduce David Miller. David's uh, a retired police officer uh, from Guelph and uh, proud survivor of uh, cardiac arrest. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what happened with you, David? Sure thing, Roger. In January of 2014, I was playing pickup hockey with a group of friends in Guelph when I collapsed on the ice with a sudden cardiac arrest. I was dead for approximately six minutes, and it's only because there was an AED available at the arena and that I had people that I was playing with that were trained in CPR that I'm here today. I am a very fortunate, fortunate person. I'm so lucky to be here. And I hope that uh, this message gets out that we need defibrillators everywhere. In public places, in private places, they should be as common as a first aid kit or a fire extinguisher in your building. Yeah, and so part of this program is, is going to be to uh, try and enable uh, people from neighborhoods to um, sign up to become a volunteer, a Good Samaritan volunteer uh, within their neighborhood. So we're going to look for three basic demographics for that. Uh, so retired persons, say age 50 or 55 to 80, 85, and then working age people from 20 to 55 or so, and then uh, teenagers, high school kids too that are mature and responsible and are willing to uh, put their name forward and the goal of the program will be to have them trained uh, uh, every two years or ideally every year and we'll have uh, maybe a captain of each one of those three segments and then maybe an assistant captain that help help drive the program from the grassroots level and encourage others to be a part of it and uh, gather together at least you know once or twice uh, every one to two years and uh, relearn CPR quickly uh, in a crash course uh, workshop uh, so about an hour and a half, maybe time commitment uh, every year or two years would be what we would expect from the community. And then knowing where the defibrillator is, and then in a minute we'll uh, grab the, the, the heated outdoor cabinet and show you the remote monitoring technology that's going along that's new to this uh, field. And uh, it'll allow us to get these devices uh, into neighborhoods where, and closer to households where 80% of cardiac arrests actually occur, which is in, in the house, and we'll also be able to get uh, CPR assistance as well uh, from the Good Samaritan responders, hopefully to, to that that home. So right. it's really a, a two uh, two part problem that we're you know, yes. two part solution to the problem, right? And Steve, do you have anything else you'd like to add? To well, yeah, I you know we're trying to get at the problem where it exists, and as Roger mentioned, eighty percent of cardiac arrests outside the hospital happen in people's homes, and up until now, the focus from a um, public health point of view has been to put defibrillators in public places and, and that makes sense certainly you know where people are playing hockey or 
Um, certainly in schools has been a big push to put them in schools so we teach kids about what defibrillators are um, and th those things are great and they make saves but if you want to really get at the bulk of the problem we've got to move defibrillators into neighborhoods in, in, a, in, an economic, in, a, in an economical way. We can't put them in every house um, but it's programs or uh, concepts like this where we have one defibrillator in, in an area of a few blocks, train some people, um, put the defib on the outside of the house, not the inside, so it's accessible not just to that household, but you know neighbor, neighbors in the immediate radius. And I think that's the way forward. And the fact that we can track these now, keep them heated in our cold winters, um, as the technology advances, you know there's going to be new solutions, and I think we're right on the cutting edge with this program. So. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're pretty excited about it, and uh, we're we'd like to throw out a challenge too to the other provinces across Canada. This is uh, number one in in a neighborhood in Ontario that that uh, of, of its kind, where it's the device is remotely monitored and uh, in a heated cabinet. And uh, we would encourage other other provinces to uh, take on the challenge that Ontario's throwing out there, so we can do it on a per capita basis. And uh, <laughs> hopefully, in you know three to five years, we'll see a lot more of these out there. And uh, it's a, it's a very it's a relatively uh, inexpensive way to uh, increase the safety of your neighborhood and uh, probably uh, also increase the value of your homes in that neighborhood as well if you, if you think mm. about it really so um, we're That's pretty excited about it, it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and, and any sponsors uh, you know whether it be business people or whomever that feel like they want to uh, get involved or builders of, of new subdivisions we certainly would encourage that too so this is the defibrillator that will be inside the heated cabinet um, and it's weatherproof and this device will not hurt somebody so if someone's collapsed and they're not breathing or not breathing normally uh, the important things are to call 911 quickly and then get somebody to go get the defibrillator and then immediately start CPR and we're going to show you in a few minutes how you do good effective CPR so by pushing really hard on the center of someone's chest hard and fast and the, the important thing to know about this is that you cannot hurt somebody with one of these, okay? It will only shock a heart that does require the shock, okay? So don't be afraid to put it on, even if your neighbor had slipped and knocked themselves out, they hit their head on uh, the pavement, let's say, and, and you panicked and put the device on. It will not shock, even if you're pushing the shock button, unless they are in cardiac arrest, okay? So when someone's not breathing or not breathing normally, Get your 911 call made, send someone to go get the defibrillator from Steve's home here, it's going to be on the outside of his home. And then start good CPR, good hard CPR, and then when the device gets there, get the device on their chest as quickly as possible. And again, it's simple to turn on, just a green on off button, and an orange shock button. There's just two buttons, so you power it on, follow the machine's prompts, what it's telling you, and then if it does, the person does require a shock, the orange light will flash, and then go ahead and push the button and then you'll be coached through CPR. So the machine really, really helps you. Makes it very, very simple. They're very easy to use and you cannot hurt somebody with the defibrillator. I'll now just open up the, uh, the defibrillator itself and just show you the simple things, uh, the, the few simple parts to it. So um, these are the pads. So once you turn on the machine, there's a green on off button here, number one. You push it on, it's gonna tell you to put the pads on the person's chest. So you open up this little clamshell case and it shows you where to put the pad. So you put one up here, right below the right collarbone, and then you put the other one just below the left breast and out on the side of the ribs, okay? And then the machine will analyze the heart. And then if a shock is required, this uh, orange button will flash and it will tell you, press the flashing orange button to deliver the shock, okay? And then the device will coach you through CPR, so don't be stressed about that. Um, and again, just do your best. You're covered by both the Good Samaritan Act in terms of first aid and also the Chase McEachern Defibrillator Act in terms of uh, you know, offering someone first aid and you are protected from being uh, successfully sued. So that is good protection. Don't be worried about that. And again, don't be afraid to, to get someone to get it from your neighbor's house and use it if you think it's required. Okay, and this cabinet will be on the side of uh, Dr. Steve Brooks's home here in, in <laughs> Kingston, Ontario. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it'll be there to protect all the neighbors. And so this is a program we feel that can be widespread and really uh, very impactful for uh, helping people that experience AIDS problems.